right. Hey, everyone. I'm here to talk about why web extensions are fantastic for AI. Consider this a sales pitch. Uh, I'm David Lee. I'm, I'm a product manager in Chrome, and uh, I work on Chrome extensions. So most people here probably already know what an extension is. But a quick intro, um, they're small little programs that are built using web technologies that can be installed to a web browser. They can do a number of different things, like modify web, page, web, web pages, access browsing data, um, and they can integrate with your browser through uh, APIs that modify, for instance, bookmarks or the side panel. And in 2023, we saw a nearly 2x increase in Chrome Web Store submissions. Um, so you heard about what an extension is. Uh, I'm going to tell you why this happened and why it's such a great match for AI. We saw an influx of AI extensions in the store. And so the idea isn't that it's a novel insight, but for anybody here who's wondering why, I'm going to tell you why it's true. So why build an extension? There's three reasons why you should build extensions of many. There's many more, of course, if you haven't already. But they also double as ways to think about what kind of extension is most suitable for you and your team. I'll also give a couple of cool examples from people who have made extensions for these purposes. Um, so first, extensions are a great way to prototype new features and functionality. Second, they are great product companions that can supercharge existing app site services that you may have. And finally, it's a fantastic way of meeting users inside of tools that they already use. So let's go one at a time. First, prototyping new features. Extensions are a great way to quickly test out new experiences in context with very little overhead. So when prototyping, especially if you have a mature product or a product with many millions of users or many people using it, you could try to integrate your prototype directly into your product. You could spend hours arguing whether the AI output is of high enough quality with your teammates. You could spend days integrating this prototype into existing production code. And if your product is super large and mature, you could spend weeks uh, in release and iteration overhead um, getting the right set of stakeholders to sign off on the right docs uh, to sign off on your idea. Or you can make an extension and skip all that. So uh, that's what one team in Chrome did. This team was exploring the idea of making copy and paste in the browser more intelligent and more powerful. Among the various explorations was the idea that's shown in this clip where a user could copy event details, paste them directly into Google Calendar, and have them show up as a calendar entry with all of the fields filled out. So the team created an extension. Sure, instead of copy and pasting, uh, this gets invoked via the right-click menu, so if you see it loop around. Um, but it was a great way to share this experience with other team members to try it out. Much better than a doc saying, hey, here, take a look. Do you think this is a cool idea? Um, everyone could just install this extension. They could go to different sites where they have events that they want to copy over and see the experience for themselves and whether it's something that they would like to productize. And so, great idea. Like, if you have any cool ideas and you want to integrate it in your product, into your product, this might be a cool way to share it with your team uh, to get their thoughts. But Extensions aren't just good for prototyping. They're fantastic as actual products. Um, there's a common misconception that extensions are these standalone little utilities, like standalone little experiences, like making an app or a website. Some people say, oh, make an extension or an app or a website. While extensions like that do exist, some of the best uses of extensions that we've seen are for supercharging existing product and existing product offerings. They're great as a product companion. Not only do they have access to the contents of the web page and a lot more, uh, which is a great help to a lot of AI experiences which need content to operate well, there's also a number of Chrome surfaces they can integrate with. For instance, in the copy and paste example, you saw them integrate with the right click context menu. Um, and you can also integrate with stuff like the new side panel inside of Chrome. Uh, for this, I encourage you to browse the Chrome Web Store. 
Uh, and among the many standalone experiences that you will see, you'll also likely quite find quite a few extensions brought to you by developers like Adobe or Pinterest, JetBrains, Notion, among many, that are made to be part of a broader product suite or set of experiences. These extensions might maybe, for instance, save pictures or web content, send them to your favorite note-taking app or extension, uh, or they might be part of a broader value proposition. Log into your account inside of this extension and enjoy the services functionality as you browse the web. Regardless of what it's used for, it's a great way to increase user engagement uh, for your existing products. No matter what the user is doing on the web, you're just a single click away. Or you could be zero clicks away because you're already where the user does their work. That's the third reason to make an extension. You can integrate directly with user workflows even while they're using third-party sites and tools. So this is a little bit of a tangent, but in my opinion, uh, AI technology of any kind is only as useful as what it can help people accomplish. So even have, if you have the most innovative experience imaginable, the coolest stuff uh, that built using AI, it doesn't really realize its full potential unless people are using it in their day-to-day -day lives. And it's hard to get users to use something new. Users already have a set of tools they use or their companies require them to use to get things done. Uh, and extensions can be a quick way to customize and optimize these tools without needing to build a full-fledged competing tool from the ground up, uh, especially if you don't own the sites that they, these users have to use. One great example of this is Aidflow. Aidflow is a B2B extension built for customer service agents inside of organizations. And so it integrates with tools like Salesforce, Zendesk, ServiceNow, et cetera, to speed up workflows for these customer service agents. Uh, not only are they an extension first business, they recently raised a new round of funding, they're growing, it's awesome. Uh, the way that Aidflow works is like this. Uh, before you, I know that Light's already playing, but before you observe the clip, um, first the extension learns how customer service reps in an organization handle ticket resolution for a lot of common tickets. And over time, it starts to suggest automations to condense these common workflows. So the clip that's shown here that's looping is uh, a demo of an upcoming feature. A user, in this case, Beth is the name, if you can't see the text, uh, files a ticket to get her multi-factor auth reset. And with a single invocation, the extension, uh, uh, there's an uh, there, the extension automates the entire process. So uh, an automated agent inside of the extension runs the whole thing. So everything that you're seeing in this clip, the humans don't have to touch the buttons. The navigation from ServiceNow to Okta, the copy and pasting of Beth's name into this is all automated and through observation of how customer service reps typically handle these flows. Um, so what's so convenient about using an extension to create this type of experience is that 8Flow didn't have to reinvent the wheel. They didn't have to create a competitor to ServiceNow uh, or Okta or Salesforce, they didn't have to build all of these from the ground up and then convince companies to say, hey, you should, you should use us instead of, instead of these, these guys. Um, they can just build a layer on top and customers continue, can continue to use the tools that they're familiar with. All right, with these great reasons to make extensions, are you ready to start building? If you are, uh, there's some cool links to get you started. Um, the next page has a QR code. Uh, I realize that um, this might not be the best format, but um, make an extension. You can also find the Getting Started Guide by searching for Chrome extensions get started on Google. Uh, and there are resources that we have for how to integrate, for instance, on-device AI into your extension. Um, and yeah, oh, that's the QR code for the uh, Extensions Plus AI resource. Um, and so take a look, 
check it out, build, publish, and if you run into any issues or you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to reach out.